Hello from the Crystal Coast. This is Pastor Kevin. It's Tuesday, October the 12th. I hope you had opportunity this last week to finish that short uh, Bible reading plan that I uh, had recommended for, on the Uversion app, Truth for Dark Days. Uh, it was put together by Alistair Begg. So very encouraging. And as I was reading through that, one of the passages that I, I wanted to share with you today came from that from that little Bible reading plan. It's Exodus chapter 2. This is after the birth of Moses and while God's people were living in Egypt. And uh, they uh, their circumstances had, had turned sour on them and, and life was difficult for them. And so here's what it says, Exodus chapter 2, verse 23, During those many days the king of Egypt died. So he's, again, he's talking about after the birth of Moses. And the people of Israel groaned because of their slavery, and they cried out for help. Their cry for rescue from slavery came up to God. God heard their groaning. God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. God saw the people of Israel, and God new. <clears throat> so I wanted us to think about that for, for just a, a minute uh, today. The first thing that I thought about when I read this passage is this, that generations had lived and died without ever benefiting from the promise of God. See, God had already promised them that he was going to give them a land, that they were going to be a people. And so they already, they already had that promise. And yet, for 400 years, generations had lived in Egypt and had died in Egypt without ever having experienced the benefit of God making good on his promise. Um, I, I thought that was, I thought that was interesting, and I, I wondered, you know, God, would it be that we might uh, live through these days without ever seeing you do what what you said would happen at some point uh, in your word? Uh, just interesting to think about. The second observation: crying out to God is always a good strategy. Laying our hearts out open before God, being honest with God, bringing our burdens, our anxieties to God is always a good strategy. Uh, next, resting in the promises of God is always a good strategy. Trusting in Him, relying on Him, depending upon Him. Uh, acknowledging that he will make good on all of his promises, that's always a, a good strategy. Here's another one. Acknowledging that God knows your circumstances, again, is always a good strategy. Just uh, just every day, in, in, in the good and in the bad, just thinking, God, you know everything that's going on in my life right now. You are aware of everything that's happening to me, both the good and, and the bad. That's always a good strategy. So here's the question of the day for you. Would you be okay knowing that your cries to God were actually going to benefit the next generation? Would, that, would you be all right with that? Crying out to God, uh, going before God, laying your burdens, and, and realizing that God was going to make good on his promises, but it was actually going to benefit the next generation. It wouldn't, it wouldn't necessarily benefit you now. How would you feel about that? Let me pray for you today. <clears throat> Father, we, we come to you acknowledging that uh, these are crazy days, difficult days, confusing and uh, anxiety-prompting days that we live in. And yet, and yet, Lord, we, in the midst of all that, we know that you have made promises that you're going you're gonna to be good on, that you are aware of everything that's going on in our lives right now, and that you've given us the privilege of being a part 
of what you're doing in this world. That we have that we have that privilege today. And so we thank you for that. And, and we would ask, Lord, that you would we so just want to be a part of what you're doing in your world to redeem a people that will belong to you forever. Uh, worship you, honor you, love you, enjoy you forever. Would you give us the privilege of being a part of that, even in these days? And even if, even if you're going to bring a great spiritual awakening, but it, it wouldn't happen until we passed off the scene. Uh, God, uh, help us to do our part. Even if that were the case, help us to do our part to lay the groundwork for that today. We just want to be faithful and represent you well in the days that you give us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <clears throat> We've got a couple of, of big efforts uh, coming up uh, as we get into the last uh, part of 2021 in an effort to reach out to our community and share the good news about Jesus. And so you're going to be hearing a lot about them over the next couple of months and weeks even uh, from sharing the gospel in our own community for for the um, through the trunk and treat that's going to take place the last Sunday of this month, October 31, from 5 to 7. And then we've got the angel tree uh, that we uh, have done for years now as a way of reaching out to uh, the kids that are part of Baptist Children's Home here in North Carolina. Uh, that uh, the angel tree is going to go up this coming Sunday, October 17, out in the lobby. And then, as I mentioned this past Sunday, Operation Christmas Child, we'll be collecting items for that effort between now and uh, the middle of November. If you will stop by the tables that are in the hallway behind the worship center this coming Sunday, there'll be a table for Trunk and Treat, there'll be a table for Angel Tree, there'll be a table for Operation Christmas Child. There'll be detailed information about all of those uh, endeavors that uh, you have an opportunity of being a part of. And I want to encourage you, let's, let's be a part of that. And let's continue to come together and be united in the passionate pursuit of the next generation.